What's up guys, Sagi here, and welcome to another Tech Year Talk. Today we're gonna to compare the Sony A6400 to the Canon M6 Mark II. Before the A6600 was released, the 6400 was Sony's best APS-C sensor camera. And it still is one of the best values when it comes to a mirrorless camera for hybrid shooters who are going to use it for both photography and video. And until recently, the closest APS-C mirrorless competitor from Canon was the M50. And while I like the M50, it has some pretty serious limitation when it comes to 4K video, and I was super excited to check out the new Canon M6 Mark II. I'm gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of both cameras when it comes to both photography and video, and hopefully I can help you decide which option is best for you. My goal with every camera comparison is to give you a detailed overview of the cameras and compare them in a way that relates to real life use. I will go over some of the important specs of these two cameras, but I'm gonna focus on sharing my actual user experience with you. Before getting into the detailed comparison, I'm gonna quickly go over some overall key features in case you're just starting your research. The A6400 has a really nice magnesium alloy body with sealed buttons and dials. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and the Bionz X image processor. It can shoot it up to 4K 30 frames per second and 1080p or full HD at 120 frames per second. It uses a hybrid autofocus system with 425 phase and contrast detection points. It has a three inch flip LCD screen and can internally record 4K 30, 420 and externally at 422. It has a nice OLED electronic viewfinder. It can shoot continuously at up to 11 frames per second. And finally has an expandable ISO of up to 102,400. The M6 Mark II features a 32 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and it uses the new Digic 8 processor. It has a 5,481 point dual pixel autofocus system when using the optional electronic viewfinder or the LCD. It has a three inch flip touchscreen. You can record 4K 30. It can shoot full HD or 1080p at up to 120 frames per second for slow motion but with some limitations that I'm gonna discuss later on in the video. We've got a 3.5 millimeter mic input, in-body 1080p and 4K time-lapse, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for remote control and easy file sharing, and finally it offers digital image stabilization that can work together with lens-based IS. Okay, so let's get to the comparison, and I wanna mention that the A6400 sells for 900 bucks and the M6 Mark II sells for 850 bucks, so not a big difference, and it'll be interesting to see which of these ends up being a better value. I wanna start out talking about the sensor and the processor. The A6400 comes with a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, and the M6 Mark II comes with a 32 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. Both sensors performed really well for me for both photography and video, and I'll talk more about the differences in the image quality section. The Sony APS-C sensor has a crop factor of 1.5X, and the Canon sensor has a crop factor of 1.6X. That means that if I put a 50 millimeter lens on the A6400 and apply a 1.5X crop, it will give me a full frame equivalent field of view of 75 millimeters. On the other hand, if I put the same lens on the M6 Mark II, I have to apply a crop factor of 1.6X and now I'm getting an 80 millimeter equivalent field of view. That means that the Sony provides a slightly wider angle of view, but it's not a big enough difference to be a deciding factor for me. Now, when we look at the combination of the sensors with the new processors, both cameras produced very nice images and video for me. In addition, general menu operation is fast for both cameras. They both have very quick startups and things like image preview and video playback are nice and fast. Now, because of how I shoot, one of the features that I look at for every camera that I get is continuous or burst shooting. You can just point the camera at a subject, hold down the shutter, and the camera will just keep firing. Now, this is a nice feature if you're photographing pets, sports, kids running around, or any fast moving subject. Now, of course, the more frames per second the camera gives you, the more exposures you'll have to pick from later on, and the more likely it is that you're gonna get the exact shot that you want. Now, the A6400 can shoot it up to 11 frames per second in burst mode, and the M6 Mark II can shoot it up to 14 frames per second. When we look at buffer memory, we see that Sony reports 99 JPEGs or 46 RAW images for the A6400, versus 54 JPEG and 23 RAW images for the M6 Mark II. So here you'll need to make a choice. If you'd rather have a camera that can take three extra frames per second, then you'll want the M6 Mark II. But if you want a camera that can shoot continuously for longer, then you'll want the A6400. 
The M6 Mark II also offers a raw burst mode, which uses a cropped version of the sensor and it gives you 30 frames per second, which is nice when you're trying to capture an exact moment. Now moving on, one of the most important things for me with any tool that I use is ergonomics in terms of both handling and user experience. As far as size goes, both cameras are small, which makes them super portable and great options for when you're traveling. The cameras are about the same size and both of these companies did a very good job when it comes to handling. We have nice and deep grips relative to the size of the camera and both are essentially covered with rubbery material for more secure handling. Next I want to discuss the buttons and dials on these cameras. I think that if you're buying a camera and you're just using it with the factory settings, you're really missing out. Part of what you get when you're buying a higher end camera is the ability to customize it to work better for exactly how you shoot. The A6400 uses the top dial and the control wheel on the back for aperture and shutter speed. And it has two custom buttons that you can use to get quick access to frequently used features. The M6 Mark II has two top dials and a rear dial, so you can easily adjust aperture, shutter speed, and ISO without having to use a custom button. Also, there's a great dial function button, which we saw on the EOS R. It lets you quickly toggle the functionality of the rear dial and make adjustments to additional features. I prefer the user experience with the M6 Mark II, especially when it comes to photography because I can change all three parts of the exposure triangle with dedicated controls. Now for video, it's less important because I'm rarely changing shutter speed. Now both cameras have quick access menu. The A6400 uses the function button to bring up a customized 12 function menu. And you can go into the setting and add whatever features you use most and really tailor this to what you need. The M6 Mark II has a quick menu which is triggered by the Q button on the back or the Q icon on the touchscreen, which I'll get to later on. This brings up the features and settings that you most commonly change and allows you to change them using the directional buttons or the touchscreen. Now this is another area where each person picks what's most important to you. If you want to be able to change the functions on the quick menu, then the A6400 is a better fit. If you prefer to use the touchscreen and you're comfortable with the pre-programmed settings on the quick menu, then the M6 Mark II will work better for you. Next, I'm gonna mention the menu systems. I have several Sony cameras, so I'm pretty used to where everything is, but I still think that Sony has some opportunities for improvement there. Overall, I think the Canon menu system is easier to learn and use, and the ability to use the touchscreen when interacting with the main menu gives it another advantage. From an overall user experience, I prefer the M6 Mark II. I concede that this is a personal preference, but I like the additional dials, and with full touchscreen functionality, I felt that it provided a more streamlined user experience. As far as battery life, the A6400 uses the NPFW50 battery, and it's rated for 360 shots using the viewfinder and 410 shots when using the LCD. On the other hand, the M6 Mark II uses the LPE17 battery, and it's rated for 305 shots using the viewfinder and the LCD. Now here I'm giving the clear edge to the A6400, because it has about 20% higher battery life. One feature that I really like about the A6400 is that it can be used while plugged in. So if you record long video sessions or for streaming, you don't have to worry about the battery. The M6 Mark II does have a similar feature, but you have to use a coupler if that's something that you're interested in. Now, when it comes to charging, the A6400 doesn't come with a battery charger, so you have to charge the battery in the camera. The M6 Mark II, on the other hand, does come with a dedicated battery charger, and you are able to charge the battery in camera, but only if you use a power delivery capable power source. If you end up buying extra batteries for the A6400, just remember that you'll also need to pick up a charger so that you can charge the battery while you're using the other one in the camera. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the viewfinder. Because of the A6400's rangefinder style design, the viewfinder doesn't protrude from the top of the body and it contributes to a more compact design. Now going to the M6 Mark II, well, you probably noticed that there is no viewfinder on the M6 Mark II. And that's because Canon offers the EVF DC2 as an optional feature for an additional 200 bucks. And this EVF connects to the M6 Mark II using the hot shoe mount. If you're in the US and you buy the M6 Mark II with a kit lens, then the viewfinder is included. I'm definitely gonna give the edge here to the A6400. First, the viewfinder is included for the price even if you just buy the body. Next, it doesn't increase the size of the body 
And finally, it doesn't require you to use the hot shoe mount. On the M6 Mark II, you can't use an external flash if you use the EVF because the DC2 is already occupying the hot shoe mount. Next, I wanna talk about resolution, frame rate, and image quality. For photography, the A6400 offers a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image, and the M6 Mark II has a maximum image resolution of 6960 by 4640, which is quite a bit larger. And when shooting stills, this means that you'll have more flexibility with cropping on the higher resolution sensor. Both cameras can shoot in JPEG and RAW, so you can decide just how much information you want to capture depending on what you want to do with the images in post-production. Personally, I always shoot in both JPEG and RAW so that I can make that decision later on. I was super happy with the images I got from both cameras. The photos were sharp and had good dynamic range. I like the low light performance of the A6400 a little better, but I prefer the JPEG color processing on the M6 Mark II. I can do a more detailed image quality comparison in another video. So if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comment section and make sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. For video, the A6400 can record 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second and full HD or 1080p at 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. I do wanna mention that 4K 30 has a 1.2X crop, so we're losing a little bit of the frame. The M6 Mark II can shoot 4K only at 30 frames per second and full HD or 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second. There is a high frame rate option which gives you 1080p at 120 frames per second, but there is no autofocus, so you'll have to use manual focus, which is a little bit limiting. Canon has announced that it's releasing a new firmware update for the M6 Mark II, which will add 24 frames per second for both 4K and 1080p, and it's already done that to the similarly featured 90D. What's nice to see here is the 4K on the M6 Mark II is no longer limited by an additional crop factor of 1.7x like it was on the M50, and it also uses the dual pixel autofocus. When we're looking at resolution and frame rate, it's kind of a mixed bag. The A6400 currently has the advantage with 4K in both 24 and 30, and 1080p at 120 frames per second for slow motion with autofocus. The M6 Mark II can shoot 4K 30 without the additional crop of the A6400, but it doesn't offer 24 frames per second in 4K or 1080p yet, and 120 frames per second doesn't offer autofocus. And both cameras can also record 8-bit 4K 30 422 using a clean HDMI out. Overall, 4K footage from the A6400 is slightly sharper and more detailed than the M6 Mark II because the A6400 downsamples from 6K, so if that's a priority for you, I would suggest you go with the Sony. However, because the M6 Mark II 4K is up or subsampled, which does result in a less sharp image, it does have the advantage of a much lower rolling shutter. For 1080p, I think I prefer the M6 Mark II footage to that of the A6400, and it's probably on par with the X-T30, which if you've watched that review is saying a lot. And just to switch it back up on you, if you plan on doing a lot of slow motion, then I suggest you go with the A6400, because you have the option to use autofocus, whereas the M6 Mark II requires you to use manual focus. The A6400 also offers a video option called SNQ, which, if you're familiar with, allows you to select frame rates ranging from 1 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second. And the camera will either slow down or speed it up to either 24 or 30 frames per second for you. So if you're using SNQ 120 and then you watch the clip in the camera on the computer, it's already slowed down versus using regular 1080p 120 frames per second, which you need to slow down using the video editor. Next, let's talk about time-lapse. The A6400 offers interval shooting, which lets you have full control over your time-lapse. You can drag your shutter. You can get the exact results that you want. Now, once you're done shooting, you'll have to take the individual photos and compile a time-lapse video using software. The M6 Mark II comes with in-body 4K time-lapse, meaning that the camera will actually compile the time-lapse for you so that it's ready to be viewed. And another great thing about the M6 Mark II is that Canon made a significant upgrade here so that you're no longer limited by a two-second shutter speed. You can now go all the way up to, I believe, 30 seconds. I'm not gonna pick a winner here because different users are gonna have different preferences. Some people are gonna like the additional level of control of processing the time-lapse in post-production, 
and some people are gonna like the ease of use of having the camera do everything for them. Moving on, let's talk about live streaming. As I mentioned, both cameras offer a clean HDMI, so you can easily live stream with continuous autofocus and get amazing sharp video that's always in focus. An area where I give the a6400 the edge is that it doesn't have a 30 minute recording limit for video. And this allows for continuous shooting of longer clips and removes the hassle of having to keep track of the length of the current clip so you don't accidentally reach the 30 minute mark and have your camera automatically stop recording. This can be super useful if you shoot very long videos or events and you don't wanna record externally. Now the last thing I wanna mention when it comes to video options is picture profiles. This is another area where I give the a6400 the edge. Canon did not include C-Log with the M6 Mark II, whereas the a6400 offers S-Log 2, 3, and HLG for a more flat image that gives you additional flexibility when it comes to color correcting and grading. And I know that not every user is going to use that, but I do think it's something that's worth mentioning. All right, next let's talk about autofocus. And before we get into the specs, I'm just gonna tell you that autofocus on both of these cameras is fantastic. The a6400 has 425 phase and 425 contrast detection points that cover about 84% of the sensor. The M6 Mark II uses Canon's dual pixel autofocus system, which covers essentially the entire height of the sensor and 88% of the width with 5,481 autofocus points. In my experience for photography, the a6400 is faster and a bit more accurate, especially for continuous shooting. The eye autofocus has been very good with both cameras and I absolutely love when I shoot portraits and I don't have to worry about getting the focus point exactly on the subject's eye and I can just concentrate on framing. Now, if eyes are not detected by either of the cameras, they'll both revert to face tracking. I think the a6400's eye autofocus is slightly better than the M6 Mark II if I'm really pushing it to the limit, but for how I actually shoot in real life, they both performed really well. The a6400 also offers animal eye autofocus, which is really important to me because I take a lot of photos of my dog and traditional zone autofocus options always focus on the nose because it's closer to the camera. For video, I've always been a fan of Canon's dual pixel autofocus and the M6 Mark II is just taking the next step there. The a6400 also has face tracking, which works really well and I didn't experience any of the type of hunting that I sometimes got from older Sony models. Now, both cameras offer subject tracking, which is great and can be activated using the touchscreen, but the M6 Mark II has an easier to use interface in my opinion. So to recap, autofocus is great on both cameras for photography and video. The M6 Mark II has more autofocus points, which cover a larger portion of the sensor and simpler to use autofocus modes and interface. The a6400 has a faster optimal autofocus time, animal eye autofocus, and a slightly better human eye autofocus. Next, I wanna talk about the lens options, and I think a lot of people forget to look at this part when they shop for a camera. When you buy a camera, you're actually buying into a lens system, and there are two major considerations here. First, what lenses are available and at what cost, and then second, what happens when you wanna upgrade the body or have multiple bodies? Let's start with the first one. The a6400 uses Sony's E-mount and the M6 Mark II uses Canon's EF mount. As far as native lenses, there are a lot more options for Sony's E-mount and at a higher quality. There are some good EFM lenses from Canon like the 32 millimeter F1.4 and the 22 F2, but there are so many more options for Sony. If we're adding third-party options, then Sigma just released three fast EFM primes, the 1630 and 56 f1.4, which really helps Canon. But of course, these lenses are also available for Sony. On the M6 Mark II, you can get an adapter and then use any of Canon's EF and EFS mount lenses, which now opens up tons of additional options, but you need another piece of gear with you. Now I wanna talk about the second consideration, which is upgrading or using multiple bodies. In the case of Sony, if you end up upgrading to one of their full frame bodies like the a7 III, you'll be able to use the same lenses because both their APS-C and full frame bodies use the E-mount. If you buy APS-C lenses, you'll have to switch your full frame camera to Super 35 or APS-C mode and if you buy full frame lenses, then of course you can use them natively on the a6400. The last thing to consider here is that you can't use any of Canon's new RF mount lenses with the M6 Mark II. 
So if you own an EOS R and an M6 Mark II and you want full frame lenses to use on both cameras, you have to buy EF lenses and then use adapters on both cameras. I hope this section was helpful and I do think it's important to sometimes look beyond your immediate needs. It doesn't mean that this will apply to every person, but I like to share my real life considerations with you. Moving on, let's talk a little about the screen. Now both cameras offer a tilting screen which can be tilted down for when the camera is above eye level and the M6 Mark II can only be tilted down to 45 degrees, whereas the A6400 can be tilted all the way to 90 degrees, so there's a little more flexibility there. Both screens can be tilted up for when you're shooting from the hip or the camera's positioned low on the ground. And finally, the screens can be flipped 180 degrees to face the front for when you're shooting video and you're in front of the camera or for shooting selfies if that's something you plan on doing with these cameras. The A6400 uses a multi-hinged approach which moves the screen farther back and then up. The M6 Mark II has a simpler and more compact design which flips straight up. Both screens block the hot shoe mount on top, so if you plan on using an external shotgun microphone, pick up an L bracket or a cage that gives you additional mounting options. You can also use something like the Rode Wireless Go and then clip it to the monitor or to the hinge mechanism. Now, both companies refer to their screen as touchscreens, but the M6 Mark II has a full touchscreen whereas the A6400 only has a partial one. On the M6 Mark II, you can navigate the menu, you can select options and features from the screen, and you can touch or drag to focus. On the A6400, you can only use the touchscreen functionality for focus, so I'm definitely gonna give the advantage here to the M6 Mark II. And the next set of features that I wanna bring up have to do with audio. Both the A6400 and the M6 Mark II have an external mic input, so you can use an external microphone to get excellent audio right into the camera. With both cameras, the audio levels are always displayed on the LCD when you're in movie mode, so if you're preparing to record and even while you're recording, you can see the levels. An advantage of the A6400 is that you can modify the audio recording levels during recording. Whereas on the M6 Mark II, I haven't figured out a way to do this and the only way I could do it is to stop recording, make the adjustment and then start recording again. I also wanna talk about the preamps on these cameras where once again, I'm gonna give the edge to the A6400 because I feel it has better preamps resulting in better overall audio. Of course, you can use an external preamp like the Beach Tech Micro Pro, which is amazing or use an external recorder but recording straight into the camera, I'm gonna give the A6400 the edge. I put out a video discussing the importance of audio for video, and I'll link to it up in the corner and in the description. I also wanna talk about other features that these cameras have that could help you make a buying decision. First, I wanna talk about image stabilization. So the A6400 doesn't have image stabilization. And you'll have to rely on lens-based OSS. The M6 Mark II doesn't have sensor shifting in-body image stabilization, but it does offer in-body digital image stabilization, which can work together with lens-based IS. So if you're walking around and hand-holding the camera, you'll definitely notice a difference when adding digital image stabilization to lens-based IS and you'll notice that it comes at the cost of a slight crop. The next thing I wanna talk about is the apps. The A6400 uses the Imaging Edge app, which is okay. You can control shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and white balance for both photography and video. For stills, you can also control the self timer, continuous shooting settings, and there are some flash options. For video, you can adjust your frame rate, movie format, and you can start and stop recording. But the biggest problem is that you can't see which autofocus mode is selected and you can't change modes. You also can't see where the focus point is or select a different focus point. And this makes the app pretty much useless for how I use it for video, unless I'm only using it for framing and to start and stop recording. The Canon Camera Connect app gives you full functionality for photography and video, which includes seeing and selecting focus modes and points. Now, both apps let you preview and transfer images and videos to your mobile device. I'm gonna give the edge to the M6 Mark II because the focus feature on the app is critical for how I shoot. Okay, so which camera is a better value and which one should you get? I think it depends on your priorities. In order to make a decision, we need to discuss the cost. At the time of making this video, the A6400 costs 900 bucks, the M6 Mark II 850 bucks. So I don't think that's a significant difference. The A6400 can shoot sharper 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, 1080p at 120 frames per second with autofocus for super smooth slow motion. 
has slightly better dynamic range and low light performance, a larger buffer for continuous shooting, better battery life, built-in log picture profiles, better eye and face detection, a built-in viewfinder, no recording time limit, better audio options and preamps, and offers some advantages when it comes to the lens system. The M6 Mark II has no crop in 4K30, more dials for dedicated controls, a better user experience due to the easier to use menu system and the full touchscreen capabilities, in-body time-lapse, digital image stabilization, and a better app for remote control. I always say that you can't have everything in any camera, so it comes down to what's important to you. I do my best to answer every comment and question and I'm happy to continue the conversation with you in the comment section. I'll put some links in the description to where you can get the A6400 and the M6 Mark II, as well as some popular kits and accessory. There are always holiday specials and discounts and the links will automatically be updated with the lowest pricing. If you end up ordering anything from those links, you can help support my channel for free and help me create more content for you, so thank you in advance. I also have links in the description to the more detailed video about each camera if you want a more in-depth review. I really hope I was able to give you a good comparison between the Sony a6400 and the Canon M6 Mark II, and I'd love to hear in the comments section which option is best for you. If this video was helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and if you're interested in more camera reviews and tutorials, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon. We ready? We ready? The A6400 uses cannons. No, it doesn't. The A6400 doesn't use Canon. Animal eye out of focus. I can never say that. I can never say animal eye out of focus. Animal eye out of focus. That's so hard for animal eye out of focus. See? Animal eye out of focus. Animal eye auto focus. They don't even start with the same letter. It shouldn't really be that hard. The M6 Mark II does. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that. It, it's not that difficult. I can say it unless I'm actually trying to record it. Then I can't say. It. No. We have a nice and deep, we have nice and deep grips. Yeah, it does. That's what it's rated for. So that's why I said that. Now the A6400 can shoot. I need to breathe. Oh my god, I said it right the first time. It's the first time ever. Oh, we're done. That was it. I really hope you liked it because these are two really good cameras.